The Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra has got to be one of the most unique devices ever. It's extremely wide, thin, and even water resistant now. It has an incredible display that delivers the best portable entertainment experience I've ever had. However, its price does put it square in line with the iPad Pro, which has always served me well in the past four years of university. So is it worth it getting this over an iPad? I switched to the Tab S9 Ultra for everything I do, and I think for a lot of people, this will actually be the better tablet. The best part about the Tab S9 Ultra is the entertainment experience. It has a 14.6 inch screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's actually just as tall as a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but it's about 20% wider. However, if you're watching a 16 by 9 or wider content, then the video would actually be 44% larger on the Tab S9 Ultra. And that's a pretty dramatic difference in size, and it does translate to a more immersive experience. This screen is larger than most thin and light laptops, and it only weighs 732 grams, and it's also very thin at just five and a half millimeters thick. It's even thinner than pretty much all the phones. It almost feels like you're just holding the screen of a pretty big laptop, so you can comfortably hold it for a long time just about anywhere, although writing on it while holding might be hard to balance. The front is Corning Gorilla Glass, the back and the sides are aluminum, it's matte, and it does feel nice in the hands. Overall, the design is super minimal. It just has a small logo on the side and a slight groove for the S Pen. And the camera design is new. It now has these two individual lenses, just like on the S23 series. However, they're actually way smaller than on the S23 Ultra. And it's really nice to use this screen outdoors as well. It can hit 930 nits peak. This is brighter than last gen and looks really impressive for HDR content. When in direct sunlight, the screen is still visible. It's not quite as bright as the flagship phones, but brighter than most laptops I've tested. The only tablet that's brighter is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which can hit 1600 nits peak. Another thing that makes content on this tablet look great is the pixel level dimming of the OLED screen. Here is it side by side with the latest M2 iPad Pro, which uses mini LED and has great local dimming. The iPad gets pretty close, but for many videos, the OLED screen just pops a bit more. The colors are great too, as you would expect on an OLED screen. It mostly shows up in the more dramatic, high contrast videos such as movies or shows. For the average YouTube video, it's unlikely to look that different though. There's a feature that lets you connect this to a Windows computer and use it as a second screen, but that doesn't take advantage of the high refresh rate and HDR capability of this display. I think Samsung should really include a display input on this tablet. There might be a day when it's Android version and SOC are out of date, but even then, this will probably still make one of the best portable monitors out there. And this year, the tablet itself now has an IP68 rating, which means it should be able to withstand full immersion in water. So so you don't have to be as worried about rain. And the S Pen is also IP68. So I guess you can write or draw underwater as well. The tab has pretty thin bezels all around, so thin that they had to include a notch to put the two front cameras in. It kind of looks weird at first, but at least it doesn't cut in for regular 16 by nine videos. And this device also has some pretty nice stereo speakers, which I think really completes the entertainment experience. But gaming on this thing is also great. The wider aspect ratio does make it a more immersive experience compared to the iPad's four by three aspect ratio. And of course, the screen is 120 Hz, so it's very smooth, and the fast pixel response time of the OLED helps as well. This tablet has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, which is the same as in the latest Samsung flagship phones. But actually, it's noticeably faster than all those phones because being a big tablet, it has a lot of room to dissipate the heat. So it's able to maintain 83% of its performance after 20 minutes of intense gaming, whereas the S23 Ultra, after 20 minutes, can only sustain 65% of its performance. So their performance is about the same for shorter gaming sessions, but if you play a more intense game for longer than a few minutes, then the tab will be faster. And not only games, this thing is really good for productivity as well. It has the same aspect ratio and size as most laptops, and I find the extra width to be more comfortable for having two windows side by side compared to the iPad Pro. The only time I miss the form factor of the iPad is when I try to write things while holding it, which is pretty rare for me. But whenever I get a surface to put it down, the extra screen real estate is always appreciated. The tab the screen has almost 3,000 pixels horizontally with 239 pixels per inch. So it's sharp enough for almost any task. Even when you lean in to write on it, you won't see any pixels at all. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro has a slightly higher pixel density, but it's very hard to tell the difference. And the Samsung tablet delivers one of the most similar experiences to writing on paper. The S Pen comes included and it's as light as a regular pencil. Its shape is very similar to the Apple Pencil, being rounded with a flat edge. But the rubberized tip gives much more feedback while writing on the screen. The Apple Pencil is heavier and feels a lot more slippery. For writing text and taking notes, I definitely prefer the S Pen. On top of that, the S Pen has very little input lag and tracks very well with no jitters. There's a button on the side which you can hold it to 
to erase and then when you let go you can immediately start writing again and i feel like this makes much more sense than tapping the apple pencil four times to do the same thing the s pen also has great pressure and tilt sensitivity and it can stick to either the back side or the top edge which is where i prefer it because it's just much easier to grab it from there but annoyingly you still cannot charge the pen on the edge so occasionally you still have to put the pen to the back to charge i think what really sets the samsung tablet apart for productivity is the really good multitasking support you can open up to three apps and split screen and you can save most used apps to the taskbar to make it very easy to add in and if you want an app that's not in the taskbar this icon gives you the entire app library in the split screen mode you can drag and drop things between apps very easily and it can even be photo cutouts which is pretty fun this is a nitpick but i don't love how it blurs when i adjust the split screen sizing it feels a little bit jarring but a good thing is you can turn it off using good lock multi-star you can even have app pop-ups on top of the split screen and save pairs of apps to the edge panel to quickly launch them in split screen. However, what really makes this stand out for productivity is Samsung DeX. It gives an experience that's very similar to a full desktop. And unlike DeX on Samsung phones, you can activate DeX on this tablet without having to connect to an external display. With DeX activated, there's a dock at the bottom and you can open up as many apps as you'd like. You can resize them, place them anywhere, but the best part is there are even hotkeys to snap the windows to half the screen and corners. And it can drive an external display up to 4K resolution, but you do have to enable this with good luck multi-star and otherwise it's 2k in terms of multitasking and replacing a laptop samsung tablets are the best at it but they're not as far ahead of the ipad as they were last year since now the ipad pro has stage manager that also allows for easy shuffling between many apps and it can also fully utilize an external display but frankly stage manager is still not nearly as nice as dex you cannot resize the app and put it anywhere you want they must follow this grid system where they'll always snap to the closest size and location and there are also many any apps on the iPad that would just not be resized to the shape that you want it. So overall, as a desktop replacement, DeX still feels a bit more natural than what iPadOS can offer. And there are some pretty good reasons to replace a laptop with this tablet. Its Snapdragon SoC is more efficient than conventional x86 CPUs. There are more and more web apps that can do just about everything now. Most common work, such as writing, checking emails, watching, reading stuff online, can all be done very well in DeX on this device. And of course, there's never any fan noise. And for its weight and thickness, it's very long lasting. They managed to put a very large 11,200 milliamp hour battery inside of this. I played 4K YouTube videos on the tab for three hours after charging it to 100%. The screen was set to 60%, which is what I typically use when I'm indoors. And after three hours, it's still at 84%, which is just crazy. And the tab S9 Ultra can charge at 45 watt, so it can be topped up pretty quickly as well. But it doesn't come with a fast charger. I feel like with this battery size, the tab could last a couple of days if you're mostly just doing light tasks with it especially since there's no longer a 5G version. But of course, when you're outdoors, the brighter screen will use a bit more battery. It still has a slot on the edge, but it's not for the SIM card. It's actually a micro SD card slot, which lets you expand its storage very cheaply. The SD card won't be the fastest storage, but for some photos or videos, it'll be fine. And that's pretty cool, considering that most laptops now don't even let you do that. On its own, the tab does go all the way up to one terabyte of storage. But unless you know, you definitely need the 16 gigs of RAM option, or you just need really fast storage for everything on the tablet, then I don't really think there's a reason to go for the one terabyte option. With matching spec, the Tab S9 Ultra is the same price as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but you need to buy the Apple Pencil separately. And if you need more storage and is willing to use an SD card, then the pricing actually favors the Tab S9 Ultra. There's also this magic case that kind of turns the Tab into a laptop. It has a kickstand and a keyboard and trackpad that magnetically attaches. This thing is pretty Pretty similar to the iPad's Magic Keyboard and they're the same price too. But just the normal case and a Bluetooth keyboard can probably give you mostly the same benefits. So far, it seems like the perfect tablet, but apps is where Android tablets stumble the most in the past. However, now, at least in terms of note-taking apps, there's actually lots of really good options for Samsung tablets. GoodNotes, which is probably one of the most popular note-taking apps, is now available on Android. It has lots of great features and is well-suited for lots of different use cases. If you buy this tablet, you'll actually be able to get a year free. And one that I think is pretty underrated is Samsung Notes. It supports text and handwriting that you can mix freely. You can customize the page color and the style. I find this feature set to be very similar to Notability on the iPad. Also, just like the S23 Ultra, the Tab S9 Ultra has the screen off memo feature where you can start writing on the screen without having to turn it on first. The pen colors are neon and looks really cool. And this does save directly to Samsung Notes. Of course, there's OneNote as well. And if you're also interested in digital journaling, there's this great app called Penly. Overall, this 
large screen feels really great for writing, also for drawing diagrams, charts, whatever else. So unless you have some very particular needs, I don't think there's any note-taking or journaling app on the iPad that's much better than what's available here. The biggest problem is when it comes to creative work. This is not to say there are no decent apps on the Android side for photo or video editing or graphic design. Canva is available here and it feels great to use it on the S9 Ultra. And for drawing, there's Infinite Painter, which I find pretty good. But the major companies in this space, unfortunately, often prioritize the iPad. For example, Affinity Photo and Design are only available on the iPad. And Photoshop on the iPad just has much more features than Photoshop Express on Android. Recently, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro have also released iPad versions. So if your regular work involves those software, then the iPad is a much better companion device. Of course, I don't know about every specialized app in every niche, so let me know if there's any uniquely good app on either iPadOS or Android. And also comparing to the iPad Pro, the latest M2 chip in it is quite a bit faster. For day-to-day -day use, both are very snappy, but some games and the more resource-intensive softwares could definitely take advantage of the M2 chip. The Tab S9 Ultra has a wide and ultra-wide camera on both the front and the back. The back cameras are not great, but I guess they're good enough for the times when you need to take a photo or video with a tablet. The front cameras are not really any better. The ultra-wide selfie camera can do the auto framing thing where it will try to follow you around, but it actually looks like it's 480p. I think it's not worth it having the bigger notch just to get this quality. Another aspect of Samsung software is just the operating system itself, which I think is quite a bit more customizable than iPadOS, even in iPadOS 17. So it has this menu with a bunch of S Pen features. You can edit it and even add apps there. And something that's not writing or drawing related that I think is pretty helpful is translation. You can just hover the S Pen above text and it'll translate it for you. By default, this menu is pretty big, but you can change the look of it using the Pentastic app from Goodluck. Here, you can change the pointer, like make it a cute heart, and out of sound, but what I find to be the most useful is the shortcut to open any app. Using this, I've set it so that whenever I hold down the button and double press on the screen, the app GoodNotes opens up. The Keys Cafe app from Goodlock is really great too. I love using it to add some backlights to my keyboard, but also you can make a sticker in the photo gallery and you can access the stickers in the Samsung keyboard. This could be really great for note-taking or journaling. You can easily add in your own custom stickers. Another cool Goodlock app is Theme Park. Here, you can essentially make your own custom theme. On the Samsung phones, I don't use this because I'd rather just apply a theme from the Galaxy Store. Unfortunately, those Galaxy Store themes aren't a thing for the tab, so this is the alternative. And I've used this to apply some custom icons that I downloaded from the Play Store. I've also added in some widgets to fill up the massive home screen. This one is from Pixel Clock. I love the designs. I can check things off of this to-do list directly, and this is from TickTick. -Tick. I also really like the Spotify widget. And there are pretty good ecosystem features with Samsung phones. Quick Share is very quick. You can also copy things from one device and paste them on the other. It's also very quick. And you can even add a clipboard to the edge panel where you can see all the things that you've copied before. And now there's four years of Android updates unlike before. Over Overall, a tablet of this size with a sharp OLED screen is really fun, and depending on how you're going to use it, the size might not be that awkward at all. At least for me, I really enjoy being able to hold such a big screen to watch things. The iPad Pro still has an advantage in speed and some creative-focused softwares, but if you don't really care for those, the Tab S9 Ultra should certainly be a top contender, and it does deliver a unique and fun time. Hopefully, they'll include a display input port on these tablets in the future that would make them a much better investment. This video was not sponsored by anyone, but if you're interested in purchasing this, you can use my link down below to help support this channel. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more content, and you can watch more here.